Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being with us this evening. I am Purva, the center head at Olive Trace RBKS Bhayanda. Of your host for this evening, I would like to welcome to all to Olive Trace and before we begin, I request everyone to kindly switch up their microphones. Also, as we all are aware that we have locked up in our homes, disconnected from the world, we all have been connecting to each other through the virtual world of the internet, due to which our Wi-Fi's and net connections are overloaded, leading to technical disturbances and glitches while we use them. So here I request for your kind support and patience in case there is a technical glitch during our session today. Requesting your kind support and patience here. So, dear audience, early childhood development sets the foundation for lifelong learning, behavior, and health. The skills that the child learns during these early years stay with the child for life. Today, with us, we have our panel of who have extensive and hands on experience in the field of early childhood care and education. And today, they will share with us their experts on the various aspects of early childhood care and education like brain and emotional During the formative years, the role of the school and the parent to nurture the child and much more. So dear audience, I now present to you our panel of experts for the evening. Paminder, the head of operations at Olive Trail's chain of preschools. Ms. Krina, the Atala Vista at Olive Trails, Ms. Sabrina Dyes, the Principal at Olive Trails Mira Road, Ms. Shweta and Ms. Anupama, the Coordinator and Curriculum Coordinator respectively at the Olive Trails Chamber, and Ms. Hina, the Curriculum Coordinator at Olive Trails Global. Ms. Paminder Kohli, the Head of Operations at Olive Trails, has over 20 years of educational leadership experience. She has been responsible for building instructional program and a positive school culture at Olive Trails. So she is here to share with us her expert opinion on the importance of formative years. Over to you, Ms. Thank you, Ms. Pura, for your kind words. Uh, I would like to welcome all of you for this webinar today. Uh, the topic for today is formative years. So there are three stages of child development. We have the early childhood, the middle childhood, and the adolescence. So the early childhood, also called the preschool years, is typically from ages two to six. And that's exactly what we're going to be focusing on today. So this is a period of tremendous growth and development. Uh, you have massive physical changes which are taking place in children along with changes in their uh, social, emotional, cognitive development. So uh, this stage is typically the stage of skill development. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share a few slides with you just to give you an overview of the kind of development that's taking place in these children. And also to share how these children learn and develop socially, emotionally, and mentally. So here I go. Is the slide, is the screen visible? All right. Okay, so this is our Fuji the Giraffe, uh, our school Olive Trails mascot. So, Gigi. Okay. Uh, Hello. These are our fabulous children. Uh, you know, before they join us, uh, they join us in play school, which is uh, two years of age. With us on nursery K1 and K2. So it's at K2 that they then graduate and they go on to the formal school, which is grade one. So I'm going to be talking to you about this stage, the formative years. The next slide that I'm going to show, okay, this gives you an overview of the kind of development that's taking place in these years. As you know, early childhood development is multidimensional. We observe a lot of changes in these preschoolers. 
right from the time they are totally dependent on their parents for everything when they come to us in nursery to the time uh, when they graduate out of k2 they have a very strong sense of self and uh, you know they are independent beings in the world also the knowledge and competencies at this stage is exploding and they have incredible social and emotional development so if i go over the continuum of social and emotional development you find that when they come to us in nursery they're just about you know following simple instructions they have started uh, liking playing with other children they have learned to manage their emotions they feel a range of emotions like they feel anger and frustration and they're just about managing their emotions on the other hand when they are exiting they have a very strong sense of self and they like spending time with their friends so they like a little bit of privacy uh, they can express their preferences very clearly and they are able to play and negotiate and play with each other that's what happens at the end of k2 um, now for their cognitive development there is a remarkable progress in their thinking skills okay so their um, um, the memory starts improving and recall tunes of their favorite songs and rhymes when they are in um, nursery and they start to engage in pretend play whereas by the time they finish 6 years of age they have so many questions because they are around about the world around them so they keep asking questions they are able to do their puzzles independently they can draw some simple stick figures they can copy shapes and circles and squares etc so uh, what i'm trying to say here is uh, these are the common uh, milestones that we have noticed in our children obviously each child has its own unique uh, developmental path but these are what we have observed in so many years that we've been with the schools okay so what do you do for cognitive development as adults we need to encourage our children to uh, you know uh, try out new things you can allow them to play give them opportunities to play with their friends okay and uh, because cognitive um, yeah so that's what you do and uh, we've seen that in physical development through ages 5 from 3 to 5 uh, now they are becoming physically much stronger and their coordination has improved so their fine motor and gross motor skills have really improved and they have high energy levels uh, and uh, during this stage there is a language explosion so the language is becoming advanced in these children uh, while in the beginning they are only able to say say around 40 words but typically by the end of 5 years um, they can you know hold independent conversations they can describe events they can repeat stories so this is what is happening so the individual differences will stay so no two children are the same so please take that into account but this is generally what we have observed so so much of well, uh, understanding the language yes yeah. okay so many changes are taking place so now i want to take you to the third slide which will give you what is happening with these kids on an year or year basis okay so the next slide uh, we'll talk about this is on a yearly basis their developmental milestones so when they are um, in nursery then what happens when they go to k1 and k2 so now research has uh, clearly shown that there are strong connections between their social and emotional development and their academic success in life Okay, so at the age of three, they are, uh, uh, you know, they understand and his and her. They are aware of their own feelings and also the feelings of the other kids. They love to play pretend games, so they like role playing and all. So in K one, when they turn four, they like to be a part of a group. So cooperative play becomes important at this stage. Some of the kids love to sing and dance. also they like to be good friends so they understand the concept of being friends and they understand the concept of sharing they they are able to consider the feelings of others by k2 they participate in learning and uh, it's at that age group learning we put them into groups and they can do their group tasks 
they can regulate their emotions very well and they can they like spending time with their friends now young children are growing mentally at this stage and their thinking skills are becoming sophisticated so right from nursery when they are only able to sort objects by shape and color recognize some colors or you know remember some nursery rhymes when they come to k1 they're able to write letters and numbers and recall stories they can understand colors and shapes and by k2 their vocabulary has expanded they can categorize objects based on color shape and size they begin to actually reason out and argue and argue and they can independently do their tasks and follow instructions physical development during this stage is dramatic there are you know they improve their fine motor and gross motor skills and it is this stage that the children are growing both physically as well as cognitively so when in nursery they can they're able to handle small objects and they're just about developing their principal grip by the time they are in k1 they are they have the ability to string beads and cut you know complete puzzles hold a large crayon and write and by k2 their self management skills are quite strong and they are getting physically very stronger so they, they you know they are able to dress by themselves and uh, brush their own teeth and also independence is happening there language development like i said when they come to us they are you know they have few words and they can maybe speak few sentences um, they can answer simple questions but uh, by the time they are 6 years of age they are taking part in conversations they are describing events they can write meaningful sentences they can repeat stories and they have a good knowledge of phonics so um, so much is happening in uh, their early years so therefore there is a strong need for parents and school to come together and be partners in education so i'm going to slide in you know i'm going to just list out a few ways in which parents can support their children at school um right so here we are i'm just going to touch upon a few things because this talked at length by my colleague ms anupama so the things that i feel are really important for kids is that you need to listen to your children you need to give time we all know that but i'm just reiterating what we all know um we need to encourage our children to uh you know try new things and uh, say be say positive things to your children acknowledge their feelings uh, also give them you know make them understand the consequence of their behavior please make sure that your children sleep for around 10 to 12 hours a day and they have a specific time in which they go to bed uh, make a lot of jokes and riddles just just have a good time with your kids do puzzles with them encourage pretend play in your kids um, provide an environment set up play dates for your kids now uh, allow them to mingle with their friends and uh, when the children come back from school it's a good idea to ask what your child has learned or has been taught in school so that uh, that improves their language skills as well so please read for them and the important thing that i'd like to stress over here is that the home and the school environment plays a key role in their growth school environment needs to be caring it needs to be warm where the children feel physically uh, safe and connected and challenged that's the important thing that we have to remember now i would like to talk about two concepts two things which i think make a great difference to their uh, overall development one i'm going to talk about is the language nutrition so what is language nutrition that we have uh, talked about language nutrition is a concept that um, you know there's this person called dr zosh z a u c h e i guess he is the one who's come up with this uh, language nutrition he feels and he says that like children small children need a special diet to grow physically strong and healthy similarly they need continuous language inputs to develop their language skills so he says that the school and the home environment needs to be language rich 
so what we are expecting from parents is that please talk to your children. Uh, to your children make them partners in conversation that is really important and this language nutrition you can go on google and you can uh, uh, search for a ted talk which says power of words so it says that uh, the language skill that the children get by the age of three determines their language skills in third grade and language you know is very powerful it's uh, it's needed for their cognitive development hence uh, it's important for parents to read to their children that's one thing that i want to talk about another thing that i would like to stress on is uh, structure. what do i mean by structure children uh, need to have uh, a routine they need to have a everyday routine they do have some kind of a routine when they come to us in school so they, they, fall, they get up on time they come to school and then at the end of the day they go home but why, when they go home they need to have a set routine because um, a st structure gives them consistency and it tells them uh, you know what to expect and it keeps them safe and secure so it's very important that at this stage we develop in our children this habit of structure because later on in life this will give them self discipline skills and will you know they will succeed because of these things i would like you to in your free time please google um, colin powell's ted talk which says kids need structure and they need structure and routines right from the time they are in preschool these habits, these good habits don't really develop later on in life. They have to be inculcated in children right from the very beginning. So that's something I want to stress upon. Uh, as you all know, early years is the time when they learn the maximum at any other point in their life. This is the time when they will learn the most. And it's at this time that their brain connections, the neural connections are getting established and are getting stronger with experience and environment. Thank you very much. Over to you, Purva. Thank you, Ms. Pominda, for enlightening us about how important the early years are for the child's overall development. Also, the skills like linguistic, social, physical, and cognitive. Speaking about cognitive skill development, related to the brain development, is one of the most crucial phases during the child's formative years. So here we have Sabri. Of all the friends, RBK Spoonja wrote, a visionary who exhibits leadership qualities with a commitment and dedication to nurture young minds, to empower children with the support of bridge builders and prepare them as global citizens. So, Ms. Sabrina, she is here to share her opinions on the importance of brain development in the early years. Over to you, Ms. Sabrina. Great to share this platform with all our viewers and the panelists of Olive Trails. I know this lockdown has been a very challenging and a difficult period for all of us. And we as adults can always understand what is happening and why are we in this lockdown. But these little heroes have stayed indoors for quite some time. And they have not been able to understand that why is this all happening. They have not been able to meet their friends, play outdoors, and going to school has suddenly come to a standstill. So before we begin on our topic, I want to salute all our little heroes. During this period of lockdown, we can also use it as a good opportunity and a great time to bond with our family and train our brain. Now you must be thinking parents, how can we at home train our brain and what will we do and what kind of things can we do to train our child's brain? The brain will develop its own. But today I have something very insightful to share with you so that you can make this easy way and train your kid's brain. Now, as we all know, the brain is the most important organ of our body and 80% of the brain develops from zero to five years which lasts for a lifetime. So in early childhood is a time when children undergo many changes at different levels, like physical, cognitive, emotional, and social development. So 
so that is why you know the child's brain is like a sponge and it observes everything that's why input is very critical at early years now you have a lot of time on your hand on your hands at home but uh, most of the time we are on our mobile phones and we don't have time to talk to our children but this is the time when we can encourage growth in language skills and these children can become better learners and are able to strengthen their connections in the brain so what happens when children start speaking you know they improve their cognitive skills they start communicating effectively with more people and they pro this provides a toolkit for exploring and expressing a diversity of thoughts and ideas and they know that language is something that they can express whatever they feel within themselves so bilingual children have the ability to switch between two languages which requires cognitive control happens you know sometimes we see children at home when they are speaking to the grandparents they speak in their mother tongue immediately they switch off and they are ready to switch on to speak to their parents in english and maybe to their friends in hindi or maybe to their caretakers in marathi so they are very quick to switch from one language to another language and this way it keeps their brain healthy and also sharpens their brain these type of children who learn many language at a younger age they help them to recollect names of people and maybe they can recall later on the items on the shopping list so studies conducted on preschoolers have revealed that children are capable of speaking multiple languages perform better on sorting activities and probably most other activities now i would like to take you to some of the strategies that will help you stimulate the brain music when i listen to music i feel really good it soothes me it gives me a soothing effect and yes it calms me and makes me peaceful so the same thing happens with children when they listen to music they de get de-stressed and what happens to them they go into a meditation mode it even incorporating experiences encouraging them to do sensory exploration like setting up a table where children can use their different items can be kept there and maybe they will uh, use their sense organs to smell to hear the different sounds to move their hands into a, a tray of salt trace letters this kind of activities will be very vital to respond where they can respond effectively again we come to repetition to cement knowledge you know that when we repeat things constantly we are able to memorize and it is it gets etched in our memory so children in the same way when they keep on repeating things they try to memorize and they will remember it in their later years another way to train our brain is the brain games these help the children with visual attention reasoning skills spatial and perception skills it also helps them to build their creativity sometimes we can do some simple fun activities with the children like playing talking eating singing these activities will also help them to jump start their brain we can also play board games we have a lot of board games at home just like snakes and ladder ludo scrabble while playing scrabble what happens they build new words they build up their vocabulary they create new words and you can help them out as, as parents to to make new words and to connect the words together while building blocks and legos we can encourage construction we can have jigsaw puzzles putting simple pieces and doing puzzles to create different pictures and mosaics also some activities to boost your brain power you can boost your brain power first and foremost nowadays we don't like to read any books we give our children the mobile we have mobiles the children are looking at the mobiles and probably they are doing virtual learning on the mobile itself but we should foster the passion for reading so that children start reading if they can't read and they are too small maybe we can give them some pictorial books or parents can read to them a story 
if there are books where they can use their phonic songs and they can read start reading choose toys that allow children to explore and interact have you seen your child trying to imitate himself in the mirror yes he wants to be a superman or a batman or a spider man those are his superheroes which he loves watching on tv and he wants to be like them probably he also imitates his mom and dad and he wants to be like them or his teacher so encourage him to indulge in fantasy play role play drama give them a plastic scissors let them cut paper in different shapes you know let them stick it on a paper make creative crafts they'll just love it they love to play with colors and paint so give them paint brushes if they don't have brushes you can use cotton balls for them to have fun with colors so in early years the brain is very flexible and sometimes what happens with children they refrain from listening to us and you can say maybe they get a little restless and stubborn and they don't want to listen and we during the lockdown are already stressed out with all our problems so we need to handle them emotionally by motivating and making them understand what is right and what is wrong instead of using aggression my colleague anupama will enlighten you further on this topic so we all agree that parents are the best motivators supporters and the child's first teacher we as educators at olive trails provide fertile learning opportunities while interacting with children and our preschool stimulates greater learning so just as a house needs a sturdy foundation to support the roof of the house the brain needs a good base for a lifetime and good mental functioning so to build a better future we need to build better and healthy brains i would like to share a video which will So these are some gym exercises that will help children to boost their brain function and cognitive performance. You can see the hand movements of the teacher coordinating one hand with the other hand. This game can be played with your family members as well. So who's following the instructions well? Who's doing the actions well? whether the eyes and the hand are in coordination finger as well as palm movements keep going yes coordinating with your fingers exercising your fine motor skills Before I conclude I'd like to leave you with this thought to ponder Dr Dr Einstein was not successful in school but he found something in the air from his own brain power and look what he did over to you purva thank you ms sabrina for sharing the wonderful strategies for brain stimulation to so dear audience as we have already learned that multiple skill development needs to go hand in hand for the overall nurturing of the child one of the most important skills again is emotional development the emotional intelligence and management during the early years is also one of the most important aspects to shape the overall personality of the child 
So we have Ms. Shweta, the center head at Olive Trails RBKIA Chamber, a motivated go-getter who strives for team effort and collective development, an enthusiastic educator who works to build, nurture, and sustain a culture of holistic well-being in the educational environment. She is here to guide us about helping children manage emotions and mind mindfulness techniques. So over to you, Ms. Shweta. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Purva. And it's wonderful to stay connected with one another in this uh, scenario of a lockdown. And I'm very glad to be sharing this uh, space with the uh, educators and parents. Now, as we are over here, going to be talking about uh, emotional well-being and what emotional intelligence is all about. Uh, I'd like to say, I just, I'm sure you all are going to agree with me that life doesn't come with any guarantees and warranties. And uh, I'm sure parents are going to agree over here when I say that uh, children, uh, parenting never comes with a manual. When you had your baby, you never knew exactly what you're going to be doing. But the moment you had that child in your arms, you started to immediately connect with it. And you started to uh, find out how you can foster and help uh, him or her and yourself in knowing what works best. So that's where the early emotional bond already has taken place and the child has already known how to connect. And uh, to that extent, I hold early years uh, teaching learning in very high regard because it's the most challenging. And at the same time, it's very empowering, simply because this is the age where children are going to be exploring so many things. So, uh, you know, uh, if we are able to understand better what emotions are all about and how it's going to be helping and fostering our children, that gives a lot of insight for us and for educators as well to know what is it that we are going to be helping the child uh, encounter and build for the future. Okay. Now I'm going to be sharing some things about what statistics have to say and what some uh, studies are going to be telling about emotional intelligence and emotional management. So here I go. Okay. So as uh, I'd like to cite over here what already uh, uh, Ms. Pumpender and Ms. Uh, Sabrina have already shared about brain functions and cognitive development. Over here, what neuroscience studies uh, at the Harvard Medical Association have already said, it's more about the emotional management and the emotional uh, um, you know, responses in young children. As young children develop their early emotional experiences, literally become embedded in the architecture of their brains. So they are so very tender at this moment, every response that, that they are going to be marking, uh, you know, very much strong impressions, which are going to be helping them in decoding and understanding things in future. So the emotional, they also say the emotional health of young children is closely tied to the social and emotional characteristics of the environments in which they live. We live in a, uh, a society and at the age right now where emotional intelligence is the most touted. And that, why is it so? Because uh, humans are not solitary beings. We need to stay connected. We need connections with people. And that's where we, uh, at early years, children, they need to know that apart from their family, when they step out into the new world, what it is to be connecting with one another and how is it that they can express and communicate what they are feeling. And that's where the communication skills come in. And if they really want to be uh, going forward and uh, uh, making more rational sense, again, the emotions are the seat of their uh, cognitive development. And that's what here they further say, the studies for the same, that all early childhood programs, including Head Start, must balance their focus on cognition and literary, literacy skills with significant attention to emotional and social development. So now let's uh, get to, um, you know, the uh, ground zero level. Many 
times what happens is we come across a lot of studies, we come across a lot of, um, you know, uh, sayings from others. But what happens when we come to the real uh, point where we have to handle our child or when we have to handle our children, we sometimes stumble, we sometimes wonder, oh my God, what's this going on? So let's go to the next slide as I share with you. How do we decode emotions and how do we decode behaviors in children? So in the first screen, you can just see a child, a children many times, you just cry and it just uh, immediately dampens your heart and you sometimes tend to overgive or sometimes you tend to uh, shy away and you just ignore. So all that the child is probably saying and looking for is that I need your attention. So give the uh, uh, benefit of uh, doubt and maybe, you know, the child does need your genuine attention and then you can steer away from the child to say, OK, now that you've gotten your, uh, my attention, you know, let me see how I can help you out. And then they immediately calm down. They feel relaxed. Now, if you look at the second image, many times we just uh, tend to strike off by saying, oh, my God, that child is so stubborn and cannot hear to any instructions at all. But do you know the child herself or himself could be feeling, I want to be heard. You could try the small experiment with uh, people around you. Just snub someone and don't allow someone to uh, opine themselves and you just see how they will get. They, I'm sure you will also feel the same. That's because children are uh, immediate reflection of what we are. It's just that they don't know uh, very well that why they are feeling what they are feeling. And it's our duty to make them realize that and help them out in their journey. Next, I'm sure you've come across many of these situations too, where a child is very clingy and you just are like wondering, why is this child always clingy? So sometimes it could be he just needs help or sometimes he just he or she just needs a kind of a gentle touch or a gentle assertive uh, saying that, you know what, I'm there for you. I'm there to help you out. I'm there to uh, walk you through the whole thing. And that's all they need. And the final slide, I'm sure, uh, the final picture, rather, where I'm sure you all have, uh, it's kind of a nightmare to many parents and uh, many times even to teachers who are like, oh my God, I wonder what's my day going to be like. And uh, with some children who just throw tantrums and fits of rage or uh, sometimes they just want, I just want this right now. So what I'm uh, trying to say over here is always look at the image that probably that child is also uh, trying to be assertive and persuasive. You never know. He might be a future business tycoon who's trying to sell his idea to you. Believe me, they are very intelligent. They know what they want. And they're probably, they're not knowing how to get it. So if you are going to be more uh, coming to their level, come down to their eye level and, you know, try probably giving, uh, striking a deal with them that, you know what, I think if you're going to be crying, I mean, I don't think so. I understand what you really want very well. Why don't you just stop crying and express yourself in uh, by actions or by simple words? And then, you know, they immediately come to know that their uh, fits of rage or tantrums are not going to be helpful. And they come to your mode of one, the, the calm mode and immediately they start to uh, connect with you better and uh, they know how to control their emotions. So uh, I'd like to stop my slide over here and um, as I go about summarizing uh, from all of this is uh, many times more than teaching children. What happens in the uh, much later years, we tend to, uh, children are going to be learning a lot of information. Remember, nowadays children, the new age children, are not really very interested in too much of information because it's already there at their fingertips. They have access to a lot of information. What they really need is how are they going to filter that emotion, uh, filter those informations, and emotional intelligence is what comes into the picture there because that also gives up uh, comes uh, to say what is required for me right now and prioritize and make good choices isn't it so don't you think we need to teach our children how to be emotionally intelligent and understand themselves better and their emotions better so uh, just to summarize i'm going to be saying we need to know very well what child is all about c h i l d okay so C over here stands for comfort. 
we need to know and acknowledge that children always seek comfort. And if you see many times in the early years, you will come across children who are trying to get settled and they are just seeking for areas where they find it comforting. And it's our primitive uh, uh, role over your primary role to make that setting over here. And then in our center at uh, Chembur, what we do is we have a ritual. We call it the circle time and we call it the settling time where we uh, uh, welcome children when they come in the morning. And then we have a small ritual of uh, singing and dancing and connecting with one another, which already are able to then uh, seamlessly take their lessons and their children are able to understand what the teacher is trying to say because they're happy. And that's where it comes to the second one, C-H, happy. Children are always very happy. It's just that sometimes there are some triggers that uh, keeps them out of their uh, comfort zone and because of which they, have, they don't know to express many times and they just tend to cry or they just tend to... Uh, 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 show some anger or frustration. So what it's uh, our job is to just recognize that and remove that thorn out of them. And then they are back to their normal self again. H-I, I, I would say stand. Already. In fact, I would say they are much more intuitive than us because I cite one anecdote from my experience over here where uh, I had been to one friend's place and the uh, father just said like, you know, uh, if you're not going to be doing this, I'm going to throw you out of the window. And of course, the child in question over there was really very scared. I Because you information, well, the other child just knows just misses this and ran to the window and saw there were grills and immediately she came and told don't worry brother there are grills you will not fall out and the father had to just immediately take back his words because he was like oh my god dumbfounded so you see how children are so very intelligent and rationalizing you know oh my brother will not fall out because there are grills so they are inherently very intelligent so c h i l l stands for love for learning children again are very exploratory in nature they want to find out they want to know what the world is going to offer them and as they go about as their bodies move their hands move they just want to taste they want to see they want to feel they want to experience everything at a go and they want to uh, even though they are not able to process all of that immediately but they have that uh, spirit of uh, wanting to inquire wanting to know all that we are trying to uh, teach them and finally, I repeat C H I L. So we come to D. D stands for daring. I want you all to know that children are very brave and they're very daring. They don't know fear. And that's a good thing because when you don't know fear, you are more open and approach, uh, approachable and you're open minded too. So if you notice that, uh, uh, where does a fear come about? Many times we transfer them consciously by instilling fear in them or sometimes we do that unconsciously or subconsciously. Sometimes when a mother is just walking along uh, the road and she is scared of dogs, let's say, and the moment she sees a dog at a corner over there, she immediately panics and holds the child tight and grabs hold of him or her. And immediately you have already passed on the fear to the child. So that's what happens. And while I close on this, I'd like to say that right now we are already facing a lot of uh, difficult situations and scenarios at home. And I know that all children are absorbing all of these uh, emotions of anxiety, which is transferred to them. So the uh, best that we can do is that we can stay calm, we can stay relaxed, composed, and at the same time, help our children in understanding what they are feeling so that we can have better future leaders tomorrow. And one more uh, small tiny tip I'd like to share over here is uh, please try to encourage your children to make choices. So that they are able to be accountable to what they are doing. So if you have a child who is very difficult to get along with, why don't you try uh, telling about the consequences? 
And if you make a choice of this kind, I'm not very sure about where it would lead to. But if I were you, I wouldn't do this. So they are automatically knowing, okay, this is something I shouldn't be doing or I'm going to an area which is not very comfortable. So uh, you're giving them a room for uh, making informed, in, uh, interesting and intelligent choices. And that's what builds their overall uh, cognitive decision making and uh, it helps them in their learning and make them overall brilliant individuals of the future. So thank you very much. I hope it was uh, helpful to you all. And over to you, Purva. Thank you, Vishwata. Those were some wonderful facts about children's emotions. Thanks a lot. So during the course of this presentation, we came across the importance of parent partnership along with the school, providing a balanced stimulation for the child to grow. To speak about how we, as parents, can play our role in giving the best to our children, we have Ms. Anupama, the Curriculum Coordinator at Olive Trails Chamber, a passionate and an innovative educator who wants to see that every child's learning needs are catered to, a believer in parent partnering so that the child gets the best from both the worlds. Over to you, Ms. Anupama. parents and the uh, elite panelists present here and to all who have taken out time to join this webinar. Today I'm going to elaborate on importance of parental in involvement in early years. I'm going to start uh, my talk with a very famous quote which goes like this and, and I have a guess that many of you must have heard this. It takes a village to raise a child. There is an African proverb that means that the entire community of people must interact with children so that they experience the best of the environment. A number of studies have concluded that uh, parenting is the primary influence on children's development. Parents play the most important role as a child's first teacher in the foundation years and throughout their life. The more effectively the parent is involved with children, the children's success and in their future opportunities. Parenting practices such as reading to children, using uh, complex language, responsiveness, and warmth in interactions are all associated with better development outcomes. It is generally seen that children who are involved with the parents and by the parents, they display a higher grade or scores in their tests. They generally go for higher education and they are very uh, uh, self-confident and uh, they have a motivating factor within them uh, in, in the classrooms. They have a better social skills and as well as classroom behavior. And they also have a lifelong love for learning. Won't it solve the issues for the rest of their life if they have these kind of skills within them? Now, before going further, let me share a very beautiful and a famous poem penned down by Dr. Loris Malaguzzi. He was the founder of Reggio Emilia Approach and this is now being very widely used philosophy in early childhood learning and education. Uh, let me share uh, the poem with all of you. So this is the by Dr. Loris Malaguzzi, and it is the hundred languages 
in this poem if you to read this poem do try understanding each and every line penned down by him he says that children are born with 100 languages and out of these 100 languages 99 of those are stolen away are taken away from the children by us the adults we we deprive them of the experiences by taking away by not giving them the 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 environment or the experience to try out different things let me close this slide so that we can uh, connect better yeah so we we are the superior organisms in the animal kingdom and have we ever wondered why because we are born with some innate uniqueness culprits are we the adults who rob our children of the experiences that they require uh, that is required by their mind their body their soul and how do we do that it's very convenient for us to make things easy for children because we want to shy away from uh, uh, i mean putting in the effort sitting with the child for long trying uh, trying to see and uh, uh, encouraging uh, the child to go with the learning process so what is the shortest way let me do it for my child let me do make things easy for them and that's what is totally wrong from, from on our part so they are not incapable beings they are not here i want to present certain facts that are very important for every parent and child caregiver as well as the early years educators first and foremost we should understand that the first 5 years in a child's life lasts a lifetime good nutrition health and exercise are very critical uh, in children's developmental needs and for their brain development as well children are born ready to learn and they learn best when there is a nurturing relationship and we also need to understand that the brain develops through use yes my dear all the parents and the caregivers you need to realize this the brain develops through use you need to give them opportunities for learning i have seen in many schools the teacher will do everything and the product is fully finally done and put on the display board looking absolutely fine it is not a child's work it is the teacher who has done it at home parents Uh, breaking the chapati into small pieces and keeping it in the plate for the child to have it why can't we allow the child to tear the chapati into pieces and then we cry the child is not able to develop the fine motor skills come on we are the ones who are pulling away things from children to utilize and to develop better if they are not able to break the chapati they are tear the chapati or do certain art and craft activities we are not giving them the opportunities to develop beautifully and to the optimum level so children also learn from watching and copying so we need to watch our steps as adults children learn language by listening to it and by using it so communicate as much as possible with your child children are born ready to use and learn mathematics and how by the time we are in grade say 5th and 6th we develop the fear of mathematics why why is it so have we ever introspected we really need to children learn children learn by doing through touching tasting smelling 
seeing and hearing and through sharing their understanding with with us the adults by playing and talking and also through repetitions as rightly explained by miss sabrina earlier to gain confidence have you ever watched a toddler playing with a ball what is the first uh, action done by the child the child will go towards it tries to shake it try to lick it tries to touch it tries to observe from all and patience by registering the features of the object and that's how children learn the parents of children in early years the key for the mantra is first and foremost play play and play as much as you all can so you can have ball games you can have board games we all have played with our parents snakes and ladder ludo carrom boards why we have forgotten for our own children why not bring it out currently we are all locked down why not utilize this time in developing this kind of bond use lot of different fun language play nonsense rhyme games play name games sing recite use things in home to build experiences for touch taste and smell and talk about color smell shape for example how the orange is round how the orange smells how it feels outside inside how it tastes you are giving the vocabulary to your child now second is talk as much as possible with your children talk about everyday things as you do them at home sorting the washing setting the dinner table writing the shopping list point out things you see when you are out in a car going for a picnic or a walk talk about anything and everything and for this we need an active kind of talking not a passive mean by passive is passive can be you are just nudging yeah you you are just uh, uh saying yes no ha uh, hmm whereas active is you are taking you you are coming down to the child's eye level you are trying to make a connection with the child's communication what he is trying to uh, share with you and for this you need to switch off your cell phones many times the child and they are playing but in one hand there is a mobile so this is not an active communication with your child it doesn't matter if the children they are not able to talk back at first but eventually they will and they will also start to ask questions you need to give opportunity next comes help your child to develop certain social skills why we are all depending upon the schools to do this why not it starting at home also talk to children about things they need to learn ways they should act in different circumstances and what is expected of them when they are when they are out at home outside of home going to a restaurant going to a movie hall going to a party what is expected out of them what is the expected behavior out of them help build independence responsibility and skills for teamwork by involving uh, them in shared family activities like preparing meals setting the table unpacking the shopping putting it in the respective place and then you need to provide a lot of encouragement and praise and here i would like to highlight that one should praise the effort and not the result read every day as rightly said by miss pamender language nutrition read every day to your child you will see how beautifully children are evolving help your child to develop thinking and problem solving skills discuss ideas and opinions for example talk to children children to make decisions about themselves what to wear for example uh, for a party or for a different weather or while going out for an outing allow children to make mistakes and to learn from them mistakes and last but not the least as rightly 
spoken earlier also by Ms. Paminder, is setting the routines in place. Let me tell you, if the routines are in place, 80% of your role as a parent is accomplished. It is going to benefit your child throughout his life. And with that, I would like to end my talk. And over to you, Ms. Purva. I hope I have uh, expressed myself well enough. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Anupama. Indeed, that was very, very expressive, very knowledgeable, with some very good and useful tips on parenting. So, thank you so much. So, dear audience, as we are all logged in, and probably the same scenario is expected to continue for a few more weeks, I'm sure we are all having a tough time managing the official work, the household course, and to top it all, entertaining the ever energetic and active little ones in our family. So worry not dear audience and dear parents, we have Miss Prina, our very own atelierista at Olive Terrace Chain of Preschools, a leader from the art and craft background. She is knowledgeable, confident with hands-on teaching experience and has a deep understanding of diverse art forms and techniques, theory and history. And also with her, we have Ms. Nina, the Curriculum Coordinator at Olive Trails RBK Global. She has been awarded with an excellent te and all-rounded teacher award for she received the British Council International Award for supporting the integration of international learning in the curriculum. So they are here with us to share some fun activities that you can engage your child in during this lockdown period. Over to you, Ms. Kina and Ms. Sina. Hello, everyone. I hope you all are doing good. We all know kids enjoy interacting with different types of fancy materials. Fancy materials means decorative stuff with the glittery and shiny stuff. During this lockdown, it is difficult to get these resources, but we have plenty of materials right here within our homes that we can give them to explore in a diverse ways. I'm here to share with you some fun learning activities with simple ingredients, which give children opportunity to investigate and discover their complex quality like touch, smell, and size. I would like to share my slides with you As you all can see that Ms. Anupama has shared the beautiful poem, 100 Languages of Children by Loris Malaguchi, which says, these languages are belief that there are multiple ways of seeing and multiple ways of being. Children express in a variety of ways. Let's make this period magical with some fun learning activity fun learning activity with the kids with fancy variety of ways. As we all have the simple material, it's like a torch or you can use the flashlight from your mobile also. Ask child, give them the, some words and ask child to flash the light on the words, maybe from their storybooks or maybe from the newspaper article or maybe on the, some product. Through this, children will learn and recognize the color um, letters. Even the same with the flashlight, you can do this one more activity with them. Give them the old CD and in the water, you can see the reflection is appearing on the surface. So ask child to look and find out the different colors and try to make the different variety of colors by mixing colors. Kids enjoy mixing colors and try to explore new colors. Kids love patterns too. Even with your flashlight, mobile flashlight, you can ask the kid to create a different patterns of constellation stars. And for this, you can use your old invitation cards 
and you can poke the holes with the sharp pencils. Through this, children love to do all these activities with light and shadow. They enjoy all this type of different types of activity. In here, this image you can see the child is trying to press the image, a shadow. So you, you also can give some kind of a toy or maybe you can give the vegetable or maybe any fruit or any object. You can keep it opposite of the light direction and you can see the shadow appears. Ask the child to press the shadow and through this they can improve their drawing skills. Kids have lots of imagination in their mind and they love to put it on the paper. When you give them the blank paper, they will start jotting down their imagination in an amazing way. So this is one more activity you can try with them. You can cut out, cut out any character from any old greeting card or maybe from the magazine or maybe from newspaper and stick it on the paper and ask the child to draw the background and you will see the wonderful imagination will come on the paper. Over here, you can see the child is trying to observe in the mirror his own expression. Kids are very creative. As you can see, they observe their own self. They try to experience the different lines and shapes appears different ways when they keep changing their emotions. When you give them a chance to draw, they will come up with the wonderful caricatures of their own self. This is one more activity kids love to do all these magical type of activities. This is a kind of a different type of a perspective. You can ask a child to draw something, the linear art, and you can keep it behind the glass of water with some distance, and you can see the different perspective appears in the image. You can try with different objects and different print patterns, and you can see the different reflection of light. As we all have a door in our house, we keep, we make in our house every day. So you can give some amount of a door to your child with maybe adding a little bit of colors in it and ask the child to collect few materials which has a texture and ask them to take an impression on the door. Oh my God, they will love this activity and they will do the wonderful research and they will find amazing tools to take the uh, impression on the door. Even you can give the door to improve their cutting skills. You can ask them to cut it down in a different sizes and a shape. Even they can construct and draw with it. This is also a wonderful activity, the foil paper, which is available in a house, in a kitchen. You can give them the piece of the foil paper and ask them to take the impression from different texture. Kids will go around the house and they will try to find out the different texture. They will feel it, they will touch it, and it will give the variety of textile on the paper. And you can keep it as a beautiful painting in your house. You can see the child is trying to do the threading activity, which is very easy to create in a house, even on the wall, maybe even on any plain surface, you can give them chance to do it with the different patterns they will create with simple material, with thread and the roll of the paper. As you can see, we have variety of materials in our house. Like you can use the frying spoon also and ask the child to create a pattern. Now for this, maybe sometimes you can use the toothpick and stick your wool or any thick thread along with the use of cello tape. And you can give the child to create a different types of pattern. Even you can take the different shape and create the punch holes on it with the different lines and you can see the variety of patterns they will create. Give them the opportunity to create all these things, the patterns and all by themselves. 
let them explore i would like to end this by saying play gives children a chance to practice what they are learning by mr robbins keep washing your hands stay safe stay home over to you ms purva yes thank you ms kreena so we have ms kreena next to share some fun activities with us over to you ms kreena Hello everyone. Lockdown has built certain level of stress and anxiety in parents. During this stressful situation, fun things work like a stress reliever, not only for the adults but also for the children to feel relaxed and have a good time. Children need a lot of physical activities, and fun activities are the best way to keep them engaged physically. and healthy so here i would like to share few activities which will help you to keep your child engaged and also help to develop the skills during this pandemic you can start your day with the brain breaker exercises you will get lot of brain breaker exercises on the youtube which you can do easily with your children and they really enjoy a lot which will not only keep them engaged but also physically fit and healthy you can engage your children in simple house chores like ask them to redo their rooms clean the junk drawers even the children love to play with the spray bottles you can give them such spray bottles and ask them and encourage them to clean their house windows you can also engage your children in the simple Houses for chores like folding of the clothes. You can give them a simple clothes like napkin and a towel, which they can easily fold it, and this will help to develop the self management and the life skills in them. When the moms are busy in the kitchen, they can also engage their child by giving them the cups and the glasses to stack and make towers. they can also give them the spoons and forks to count they can give some objects like to sort with the color this all activities will help the child to develop the base, basic math skills in them mom can also play a verbal games like naming the animal with each alphabet by taking turns you can also play a scavenger hunt game by asking for example ask your child to find something that begins with letter b let the child go around in the house and find for the things and once the child finds out 8 to 10 things as a motivation you can encourage and give the child uh, the any special dish and award it with it you can also design a treasure hunt where you can hide anything and give a clue to the child to find that thing uh, if it would be appreciated if you can make it look tricky which will help them to build their resilience and the ability to find the things by their own i would also like to show you some practical activities you can create an idea box for your children where you will sit and brainstorm with your children that when they are sitting still what would they enjoy doing write the activities in the piece of paper say suppose your child enjoys puzzles or maybe coloring or drawing or playing with water write down in the pieces of paper and put it drop it in this idea box next time when the child gets bored you can ask the child to pick up the idea box and pick up the suggestion the child will really love doing the activity as it was their own suggestion you can also engage your children in the simple activities as this material like cloth pegs are easily available at home during the situation you can give a piece of cloth or a cardboard and ask the child to peg it the pegs on the cloth or a cardboard this will help to enhance their fine motor skills coming to the next activity 
as we all know that children love to play with water and i would like to showcase a practical activity you can give child a bucket full of water and an empty bucket i have used here the glass bowls so you can view me easily you can give a sponge and or a napkin whatever is available at home ask the child to dip it in the water once the napkin absorbs the water ask the child to transfer it in the empty bucket child will love doing this activity and can spend many hours in this i would also request the parents that do not get panic when the child play with this activity and you know create a mess instead you can encourage your child to clean their own mess you can also give them a bucket of water and a glass and an empty bottle ask the child to pour fill the glass of water and pour it in the bottle this will enhance their eye hand coordination skills you can also play a memory games with your children for example you can collect few things on the table and ask the child to observe for one or two minutes once the child observes the things you can remove four or five items from it and then ask the child again to observe and name the things which are missing in it this will help in the brain development of the child and also enhance their thinking skills we also believe that you know children love music and when the music is played the children get totally engrossed in that so do you know that a simple glass also creates a rhythm let's try it out here i would like to showcase the activity which will help you to play with your child at home so uh, you can sit a family can sit with one member each glass and you can sit in a circle keep the glass on the floor after sitting you have to pass the glass to the next member sitting next to you in one go for example if i start passing 1 2 3 go when you do this when you keep doing and rotating around you will find a rhythm you can do many variations in it for example you can add on the actions with this passing the glass for example 1 2 3 pass you can do lot of such variations create your own rhythms next i would experiment with the colors here i have taken a glass filled with water i have a red paint and a white paint i would encourage the parents just the parents to encourage your child to experiment with lot of colors so give your children the colors to experiment and explore I take a small amount of red paint and mix it in the glass. Here I can see the water, the colorless water changing it in red color. Now I take a small amount of white color and again I add it in the same glass. And here I can see the magic of changing the color. So you can encourage your children by giving them paints. and colors to just do it the practical experiences by mixing different colors and let them uh, note down what changes they can find or they can discuss with you this will help them to explore more and more so this activities have helped you a lot which will help you to keep your children engaged and uh, stay safe thank you over to you purva thank you miss hina and miss prina for sharing so many amazing activities with us i'm sure these will help our parents to engage the little wonders throughout the quarantine period also uh, dear parents you can also see images and videos while your kids perform these activities at home 
uh, on the email address that is mentioned on the invites shared with you for the webinar. So do share uh, the images and the videos while your child is in action with these activities. Now it's time for our panelists to answer a couple of questions which are there on the mind of our parents. Since we are short of time, parents can also mail their queries on the email address shared in the invites of this webinar. So please check your invites, dear audience, and mail us your queries so that we can get back to you. So here goes the first question. What strategies do preschools use to develop social and emotional skills in children? Who would like to answer this question? Out of our panelists, anybody who would like to volunteer to answer this question? Uh, do you mind repeating uh, the question, please? Sure. So the question is, what strategy do preschools use to develop social and emotional skills in children? OK, here I, uh, I would like to uh, add something and talk. Sure. OK. Thank you. OK. Uh, well, there are plenty of strategies that we uh, use so that we can uh, have children, all of them, in a happy mode. And the most primary thing is, uh, if you notice, that uh, in a group, when there, is a, uh, when there is one child who is not feeling very comfortable, others also start to uh, feel the same. It is more of an empathetic and a sympathetic uh, mode which comes in. So uh, to get started off, many times we set that environment, we set that culture, where uh, it's more so like where the child feels comfortable coming to school and we also have a beautiful zen garden so if in schools if you all can have a nice green patch you can take your child who is like not feeling very comfortable or you can take a group of your uh, uh, class children to that space and you can have a small meditation a simple guided meditation or just a musical uh, background which are uh, and you can ask them to close your eyes and be mindful of whatever they're experiencing that immediately sets their uh, sets the mood for calming them down because when you're handling more than five kids at one time that's the most effective and that's the most uh, best way to uh, ensure that they all feel uh, rested enough and then they can continue with what they would like to do i hope this has been uh, helpful in answering the query I'd like to add something here. Uh, so like we've been talking about that the environment that the child is in plays a very important role. Therefore, I say to develop their social and emotional, uh, that's what the question was, the environment has to be very supportive. So specifically in the class, the teachers have to be very supportive. The, positive, the language used by the teachers has to be encouraging has to be positive and you know nurturing kind of environment needs to be there also uh, to develop their social and emotional skills we do try to uh, you know we have something called agreements written down so we do try to tell children when they're moving away from their you know kind of behavior we expect them to show we kind of tell them that these are the agreements these are these are called essential agreements which are there in all our preschools so we devise these essential agreements along with our kids so that really helps them to get them on track. Also, I've seen that values, values are very important. So our preschools are very value laden preschools. So along with knowledge, we are also going to be talking about being caring and empathetic and responsible. I think which goes a long way in their development. So thank you. So Pura, if there's any. Yeah, thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, I would also like to add uh, to the activity sharing thing. Uh, like I said, that you can mail us the videos and images while the child performs the activities. You can also uh, share them on Facebook or in the social media. And you can tag us while you share that particular image or the video. That is another easy option that you can opt for, uh, dear parents. So uh, here comes our next question how do we discipline our kids in this lockdown 
So this would be probably the last question that we can entertain due to the time constraint. And uh, yeah, so who would like to go for this answer? Anybody who would like to volunteer? How do we discipline our kids in this lockdown? Can I answer? Sure, sure, please. So I think uh, for children, no, uh, setting a schedule is very important. So if we already, uh, you know, uh, know that they know that what is expected out of them through a schedule, uh, the flow of the day becomes much more easier for a child. Uh, you know, a certain time for helping out uh, the parents, certain time for maybe they can help out while cleaning, they can spend some time doing their activities. So basically, we can uh, do that by setting up a schedule for them. That would really help. Well, that's, that's a nice and useful tip. Thank you, uh, Ms. Poona. Right? Thank you. So, before we sign up for the evening, we would like to share with you all a short video of our new hands-on approach towards learning. Here, our three primary learners are enjoying while being engaged in their homeroom activity. May I request Ms. Krina to kindly play the video for us? Ms. Krina? So that was the video wherein you could see our little learners doing some sand play, water play, STEM activities and so much more. So as we come to an end of our session today, I would like to thank our panelists, Ms. Paminder, Ms. Sabrina, Ms. Shweta, Ms. Anupama, Ms. Krina and of course Ms. Hina for sharing crucial facts about the importance of various aspects involved in a child's overall development during their formative years. I would like to thank each and every one of you, dear audience, for giving us your precious time this evening. Hope you have found our session to be knowledgeable and useful. Also hoping that it has equipped you with some good strategies that can help you contribute better in the process of bringing up your little ones. At all of trails, we strive each day to be better and give our best to our learners as, as well as our parents. So dear audience, like I said earlier, you can mail us your queries and also your feedback on the email address shared with you in the invites. 
see you next time with an even more interesting session till that time stay home stay safe and keep your babies entertained with the strategies shared by us with you today goodbye all thank you so much